Hi all, in today's video I'm going to show you little tips on how to clean your Mac. Um, everything I'm going to show you today is free, so there's nothing that you're going to have to pay for. And basically, uh, there are simple ways of cleaning up your Mac and keeping it optimized and fast, and also making sure that hard drive space is not being used up by cache files and log files that have gotten blown up over time, and you really can't see them unless you kind of dig down deep into a whole bunch of folders. So I'm going to show you little tips on how to find those log files, those cache files, and also how to simply keep your computer random access memory and virtual memory as clean and as available as possible so that your applications run faster um, and is not sluggish while you're working. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to clean your memory. So when I'm speaking about memory, I'm talking about random access memory. And one of the applications that I recommend for this, which I've been using, and I use actually throughout the day as I'm working, is something called Memory Clean. I, I will put a link to this in the comments area of the video, but you can download it for free here, or you can get it in the App Store, which it's also free. And when you download it, uh, it'll, you know, uh, install if from the Mac App Store like any of the other apps installed into your Applications folder. Look for the application called Memory Clean. Um, but it eventually, after it installs, will put a little item up here, this little clock item, that will show you that you can clean uh, your memory from this little area. So it makes it very available. It also shows you how much memory you have available. And if your memory goes in the red over here, it usually means you probably need to clean it. Now, the cool part of this program is you actually do not have to restart your computer. You can clean your memory all throughout the day. So when is there a big memory hog that happens while you're working? You might ask. Um, one of the ways is when you're in Photoshop and you've done a lot of retouching in Photoshop and now that you're done with it, you're not really going to use Photoshop for let's say another two hours, but meanwhile there's a whole bunch of cache that is um, space that is kind of being taken up by that program. So a nice way to clean it would be using a program such as this, and it's free. So all you would do is come up here, click on it, and then you hit this little blue button called Clean Memory. As you can see, it's going through the process. So we were at two gigabytes. Let's see if we get any more available. I actually cleaned it before the video, so we won't get too much more, but uh, let's see what if we get a little bit more than 2.03. And here we go. It's almost done. It's at 88%, 90 and it's almost done. And oops. Uh, no thanks. And look at that. I got a gigabyte of memory back. We were at two. Now I'm at 3.4. Now 3.14. Now what's interesting about this is really cool is when I did it earlier, I only had 1.65 available. So imagine that I went from 1.65 to 3.12. That's a lot of extra gigabytes that can be used for running my applications. And as you can see, nothing crashed, everything's still running, so it's not really that big a deal. So again, the application is called Memory Clean. You install it, you access it from here, you hit Clean Memory, and you can do this several times as you work. When you see your computer starting to get sluggish, just come up here and hit Clean Memory, and you'll see everything will speed up again. So that's number tip number one. Let's go to tip number two. Keep your desktop as empty as possible. So a lot of people keep their folders and their uh, applications and icons all on their desktop. Well, it's not a good idea because the more items you have on the desktop, the slower that computer is going to run. It's a known fact that if you overload your desktop with folders and files and you fill it up, and some people, I've seen people's desktops have like a hundred files on them, um, and then it will get folders or whatever. It's not a good thing. Make a folder in your Documents folder and drag all your desktop contents to that folder and only keep the items on your desktop that you're actually using every single day. And if you're really there's no need to have it on the desktop, move it. It's probably not a good idea. And also, I've seen situations where if the desktop gets corrupt, anything that's on that desktop will also get damaged. So it's not a really great place to keep all your files on your desktop. I'd recommend cleaning it up. The next item, number three, would be deleting startup items you don't need running in the background. Well, the way you get to your startup items is you go to your Apple menu, you go to your system preferences, 
you go to your user accounts and from your user accounts you have to go to login items and as you can see I have two items that are starting up one is called Total Finder which is a plugin that I have installed on my OS and the second is iTunes Helper which really starts up if I didn't want Total Finder for whatever reason not to it was something that I really didn't need and I noticed it was in there I could do a check and I could hit the minus sign and get rid of it. And this will not delete the file. All it will do is not allow it to run on startup. So only when I'm accessing, let's say, Total Finder, which wouldn't work in this case because it's a plugin, but if it was an application or a helper, immediately when I open up that application, those, app those helpers and stuff are going to run. Um, it's not like it's going to stop it. It's okay to keep the iTunes helper in there because we do actually want that running in the background. But if you did have four or five more items in here and you said, you know what, I don't need those running all the time, just do a check and hit minus and get them out of there from starting up the items. So that's number three. Number four, clearing, cleaning up your hard drive. Well, a lot of times people keep their hard drive filled up to capacity. Um, there is a way to look at how much is in your hard drive. Um, you simply, uh, on the finder, go to go and let's see here it is it's uh, show status bar I believe that's the one let me just make sure uh, we definitely want to see how big these items are here this is how much space I have available in my drive if you go to go view and show status bar I'm gonna hide that yep that's it show status bar and you can actually see uh, the items that are coming up over here so I know I've got a lot of space available, but if this is like a gig or maybe under a gig, I would be a little concerned that you don't have enough space. So I would definitely recommend that you go in there and you actually uh, delete some files. So a lot of people say, well, you know, I need all the files on my desktop. What am I supposed to do? Get an external hard drive. Drop some files on there. Put them away. You know, you still have them available when you need them, but they don't need to all be on your local computer. So that's cleaning up your hard drive. And the next one, number five, is using a utility for maintenance where you can delete the font cache and possibly empty the trash. So one of the applications I recommend for that is uh, called Onyx. And here it is, and I'll put a link uh, in the comment section for that as well. Um, once you actually uh, download it, you're going to get a DMG folder in a uh, file in your downloads folder and here is the Onyx application after I loaded the DMG file and uh, you're just going to drag that from here to here into your applications folder and then open it up once you open up that folder um, I mean that file you're going to have something that looks like this and let me show you a little bit about that okay so here's what uh, this particular application looks like and it's going to, the first time you start it up, ask you a couple questions, just say OK. It's going to run through a little maintenance startup, just check your hard disk, and that's fine. But we're going to focus on one little area of Onyx, which is cleaning right here. So we're going to click on that cleaning utility, which is what we're going to work on. We're going to leave all the defaults and just hit execute, because it's not going to cause any problems. Then we're going to go to the user area, and well, actually, once you hit execute, I believe it will do it on all of them, but I would recommend that you kind of go through this and make sure that everything that is selected is really what you want. Um, what this does is it's deleting the cache. If you notice, it says delete cache here, delete cache here. Um, here it's deleting the DNS cache and a couple of others. You might even want to delete the cookies, but it's not checked. And the, the cookies will affect uh, some of your internet passwords and things. So if you're not interested in deleting that, that's OK. The font cache is really important. A lot of people spend years and never do this, but definitely helps a lot when you don't have cache. Um, it doesn't delete the fonts. It's deleting cache files that are just replaceable. They're not going to cause a problem. The log files, I think, are the biggest thing because a lot of times nobody ever thinks to delete the log files, and these files sometimes can be really big. I've seen them on computers taking up 20 megabytes of space for a log file that nobody ever deleted. So that's always good to check. Then there's some miscellaneous items that you can delete, um, some obsolete items. How does it know that? Previous iTunes libraries. 
You may not need an old iTunes library. If you don't notice that anything's missing from your iTunes and you have a previous library somewhere, you may not need it. But if you're concerned about it, you can always uncheck that. Um, and then, of course, it allows you to delete the trash here. And you have some choices about the trash. At this point, if you hit Execute, which I won't do because it'll stop this video, um, it'll go through the process of all of this and clean it up. And we'll also delete your, your trash. Now, the reason why deleting the trash is important is some people put things in the trash but never actually empty it. And obviously, you can go to here and go to empty trash. It's doing the same thing. But a lot of people just simply forget to do it. They just don't empty the trash. And what ends up happening is they don't have any space on their hard drive because their trash is full. So why is that important? Again, your programs need virtual space, virtual memory, and it uses your hard drive space to run the programs. So if you're wondering why when you have Photoshop open and your mail program open in the web browser and suddenly you're freezing and your computer's going slow, it's run out of memory and it has no more memory. A lot of people say, well, if I increase the RAM, will it speed up? Well, it depends why it's slow. Is it slow because you have huge log files or caches that need to be deleted? Or is it slow because of other reasons, like the hard drive doesn't have any space? 90% of the people who come over to me and say to me, my computer's running slow, and the first thing we do is check the space of the computer. And if we see that there is no space, we definitely um, know that that's probably what the slowdown is. So the best tips I can give you is the five that I've gone through, and I would recommend uh, trying out this free program called Onyx. I would recommend trying out this free program called Memory Clean, and definitely following the other maintenance tips uh, that I put in this video. And I'm also going to copy and paste that text file that had those tips on it so that you'll be able to refer back to them and uh, try them out on your computer. Thanks for listening and hope this helps speed up your computer and optimize your Apple experience.